Greetings, everyone. In today's video, I want to go over everything coming to Snowbreak in the Ballad of Chaos event update. The first thing on our list is going to be the seven day login rewards. Simply by logging in for seven days, you'll receive 10 limited banner tickets. They have been doing this for pretty much every patch, and I hope they never stop. The next thing on our list is the change coming to the standard banner. After the update goes live, players will now be able to target a desire five star from the standard banner. This means you no longer have to rely on RNG and can just go for the character you want. I am currently missing Marion Swift and Winter Solstice, so this is going to make getting them a lot easier. The only way this could be better is if they added a similar feature to the limited banner. Being able to choose who you lost a 50-50 to would be pretty great, but I'm not complaining this is a big W for us. Along with the banner change, the new operative Katya Klein will also be getting her debut banner. We previously saw this character back during the 5th Research Institute incident, but it looks like she have gotten herself a real body since then. She wields an entirely new weapon type in the form of a crossbow, and her signature bow Neptune's Nova will be available in the weapon banner. The new logistics set, Eli Squad will also become available and can be purchased via the event shop. No idea what it does yet, but the artwork looks pretty cool. Also available in the event shop is five extra limited banner tickies, a new gold weapon attachment, a new four-star bow for Katya in the form of the carbon atomic plate, a new dorm trophy in the form of the Mask of Mirage, and of course the usual staff will also be here, but let's keep this short. Katya will also be getting her own dorm room back at HQ, along with some spicy new interactions. Fanny will also get a new interactive furniture in the form of the perfect display case. Man, Fanny fans are one step closer to living out their dreams of being stepped on by her, must be nice. Must be nice. You guys are not gonna believe this, but the stalker is some appearance options. He still looks like a stalker, but at least he'll be easier to identify now. Speaking of appearances, several new outfits will become available after the update, and they are as follow. Graceful danseuse for Katya Klein. Symphony of Frenzy for Fritia Hush. Nightfall Scarlet for Life Wild Hunt. And Allure of Lotus for Acacia Kaguya. The outfits are purchasable via the shop. The Covert Zephyr for Haru Abscondidas is available for paid battle pass owners. And the Indomitable Charm for Fenny Lionheart can be purchased using the Bright Star tickets from the daily logins from the monthly Digicash Pass. Moving on to activities, Chapter 12 of the main story will become available after the update, along with a new boss and new locations to explore. The new permanent game mode Paradox Maze will also become available after the update. In this roguelike game mode, players will be tasked with clearing several levels. The difficulty of these rooms can be selected before the game mode begin. The higher the difficulty, the higher the reward. It's unclear if co-op will be available for this mode, if it isn't. That will be a big miss opportunity in my opinion. The current reward for this mode are on screen now. Notable ones are the sniper rifle, chocolate filling, the weapon banner ticket, and the weapon evolution materials, which are uncap. On January 22nd to February 6th, the boss rush mode Bulwark Hymn will become available. This mode can be completed either as a solo or in co-op. The solo wave defense, Horizon Defenders now with machine gun turrets will go live on February 5 to February 19. On February 8 to March 7, Haru, Abscondidas, and her weapon 16 Psyche will be getting their rerun. This variant of Haru is likely my favorite character in the game. She is very good at dealing with large groups at close to medium range, but bad at dealing with shields, so keep that in mind. On February 19 to March 4, the co-op wave defense Endless Battles makes its return. There is also mentions of a new stealth gameplay mechanic, but it's unclear to what capacity these will be implemented, so we just have to wait and see. And that will do it for our overview for the Ballad of Chaos update. 
One last thing before we go. I wanted to touch on the over-sexualization aspect of the game lately. I am not sure if you guys have seen it and I hope it does not make it into the game, but this is mostly in regards to the Adjutant's Night Attack teaser trailer that was posted on Bilibili. Look, I have nothing against a little fan service, but this game really doesn't need the excessive amount of it that is pushed out with every update. I wholeheartedly believe the game have the potential to bring in new players and retain old ones without rely on these risky tactics. Regardless of what your stance is on it, I think we can all agree on the fact that we all want this game to succeed. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this is not what success looks like. Not only does things like that alienate a vast majority of your potential player base, advertisers and potential collaborators will not risk having their brands be affiliated with this type of material, especially here on YouTube. Honkai Impact Third is a game I am sure most of us are familiar with. In its early days, they did some pretty risky stuff, and if you were around back then, you may know what I'm talking about. But have you noticed how tamed Genshin and Star Rail are compared to Honkai Impact? And both of those games have become mainstream. It's definitely possible for Snowbreak to find its piece of the pie here, but not like this. I know this will be an unpopular opinion, but look man, they have already cut the English VAs. Do you really think they're going to keep the server running for the five people that want more fan service? I don't think so.